chair out to, to close up. Is that pretty good? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise God. Amen. Why don't we stand together right now and just welcome the presence of the Lord. Amen. And just uh, allow the Spirit of the Lord to just begin to minister to us right now. In Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, we call upon you now. We call upon you now. We thank you, O oh God. Uh, thank you that you're in this house. Thank you, Lord, uh, for your mighty power and spirit that's at work among us, O oh God. Uh, we give you glory. We give you praise. In the name of Jesus, uh, thank you, Lord, for your plans for this day. Hallelujah. Lord, we claim now, Lord, a mighty work of your spirit among us. Uh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we worship you, we worship you, we worship you, we worship you, Lord, we worship you, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, amen, amen, amen. Welcome, everybody. Praise God. Uh, good to be together on Sunday morning. Uh, hallelujah. Maybe the, maybe the rain on the outside just indicates rain on the inside. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Uh, praise God. Hallelujah. Just want to quickly uh, mention a couple of uh, announcements before we uh, really get started into the service. Uh, uh, we're going to have a we're going to have a great day today. Uh, we got a we got a big double header today. Hallelujah, Amen. We have the Chandlers with us this morning. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Thank the Lord. Uh, amen. And uh, then uh, tonight, uh, uh, Brother Jason and Sister Brittany Collet will be here, and Brother Collet is going to be preaching for us tonight. Uh, and so uh, this is just doubleheader day. So uh, I believe the Lord has great plans, uh, wants to pour out His Spirit uh, in a mighty way, uh, and we're going to expect that in Jesus' name. Can I get an amen in the house? Uh, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Of course, our, our regular services throughout the week, uh, uh, prayer meeting on Tuesday night, uh, uh, worship and Bible study on Wednesday night, and then on Friday night, uh, uh, we will be hosting a sectional wide, section wide youth rally. Uh, there, the theme for the rally is advancing the vision. Uh, and uh, uh, our own uh, brother Andrew Christian will be uh, speaking in that rally. And so, I just love for all of our first church folks uh, to just come out Friday night and support our youth, uh, not only our local youth, uh, but uh, our youth across our section that will be gathering. Uh, Amen. Uh, and, uh, and supporting uh, uh, Brother uh, Andrew as he preaches. Uh, and so uh, Friday night at 7.30, uh, be a great rally time. Uh, and we encourage you to come. All of our men, uh, we hope to get back to men's prayer breakfast this Saturday. Uh, so 8 o'clock Saturday morning, we'll meet in Cooper Hall for, for uh, prayer and devotion. Uh, and then uh, uh, go out and eat together. Uh, so uh, uh, keep that in mind, all of our men, uh, Saturday morning uh, at 8 o'clock. Amen. Uh, now, we thank the Lord for uh, all that he is doing. Uh, and, uh, and certainly uh, a number of our people that uh, have been very, very sick, God has really touched. And, and we're thankful for that. Got uh, uh, another good report uh, from Brother David Green uh, uh, that he is doing much, much better. We're thankful for that. Uh, praise God. Uh, 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 others that have had surgery and they're recovering well, and we thank the Lord for that. Uh, but uh, we do want to continue especially to pray for Sister Hook. Uh, uh, they did have to take her back to the hospital. And uh, uh, so uh, uh, we're just praying and believing that uh, things will turn back around now and and uh, back in the right direction. This is not uncommon with this, uh, uh, with this virus uh, in recoveries for there to be uh, uh, kind of a couple steps forward and then sometimes a step back. But we're believing that now we're going to see some more steps forward here in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, thank the Lord. Uh, amen. Uh, also, Brother, uh, Brother Eric May's father uh, has been diagnosed with cancer. We'll be having surgery uh, uh, this coming week, uh, 
most likely. And so uh, we want to pray for him. There's other needs. There'll be other needs, I'm sure, that will be uh, uh, projected. Uh, uh, pray one for another. Pray for the service. Uh, let's believe God for a great outpouring of his spirit. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. Do we have any believers in the house today? Yeah. Hallelujah. If you're a believer, then lift your voice right now in faith, taking these needs to the Lord. In Jesus' name, Father, Lord, God, we call upon you. We thank you, O Lord, for your mighty power. We thank you, O God, that you, Lord, have invested your gifts into your church. And I pray for the operation and demonstration that of the Spirit among us, even right here today. Oh, Lord, uh, oh, God, I pray, Lord, uh, God, for faith to rise. I pray, uh, Lord, for gifts of healing. I pray, uh, oh, Lord, uh, for miracles. Uh, oh, Lord, I pray that you would intervene. Uh, Lord, we lift up especially, uh, Lord, Sister Hook, today, I pray for your continued touch. Uh, oh, Lord, uh, God, raise her up as a testimony of your power. Lord, we believe you for it. I pray, God, Lord, for Brother Eric's father, in the name of Jesus, loose your healing, oh God. Lord, work and move in this need, I pray. Oh Lord, we believe you, oh God, for your mighty power to work, oh God. Lord, demonstrate your power even right here in this service. Oh, Lord, I pray for an outpouring of your spirit. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, we thank you, Lord. We claim it now. Uh, we receive it by faith. Uh, in Jesus' name, uh, we receive it by faith. Uh, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Uh, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. Uh, Praise God. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Our ushers are going to come as we're preparing to give this morning. Amen. Thank you for your faithfulness in giving. If you've already given online, thank you for that. All of our online folks who are joining us for service today. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, you can give online. There'll be uh, instructions there uh, uh, for you if you would uh, uh, like to uh, contribute to the kingdom of the Lord uh, as we uh, bring our offerings and, and the Lord's tithe into the storehouse of the Lord. Uh, so let's declare, uh, let's declare our faith right now uh, upon the authority of your word that uh, I give and it shall be given unto me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither. I bring the Lord's tithe today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not room enough to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs. Raises and bonuses, uh, sales and commissions, uh, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, uh, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, royalties received, uh, my whole family saved and walking with God, uh, health and abundance to walk in divine favor, and blessing. I am blessed going in. I am blessed going out. All that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. We claim it. Receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Come and give today and let's worship. Hallelujah. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has the Lord and me. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad. Oh, this is the day that the Lord had me. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day. Yeah, this is the day.
rejoice for he has made me glad oh he has made me glad he has made me dead i will rejoice for he has made me glad well this is the day well now this is the day that the lord has made that the lord has made i will rejoice i will rejoice Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Aren't you glad the Lord has given us this day to worship and to praise Him? Hallelujah. Amen. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. What a joy it is to have the Chandlers with us again. They've been with us several times in the past. Always been such a blessing to our church here. And it's just such a great uh, uh, a blessing to have them with us again today. Praise God. Uh, these folks, they travel all over, uh, all over North America and around the world, uh, uh, singing, preaching, uh, proclaiming the gospel, uh, being blessings to congregations uh, uh, across our fellowship. Amen. And so uh, we're blessed today that they can be uh, together with us. Uh, now, after service, uh, uh, they, have, uh, they have some items out in the foyer there that uh, will be available. Uh, uh, Sister, uh, uh, Sister Chandler has some, uh, some great apostolic uh, clothing out there uh, for our ladies, and, uh, and uh, they, have, uh, they have CDs and DVDs and, and all of that uh, of uh, as, uh, some of their, uh, their projects and so on and, and various items. Uh, all of these things uh, simply help uh, uh, support their ministry to, to enable them to be able to uh, uh, travel. I know this year has probably been a, a very difficult uh, year uh, uh, in traveling. Uh, uh, I'm sure there have been plenty of cancellations uh, uh, due to uh, COVID and all of that. Uh, so uh, uh, if you would like to be an extra blessing to them uh, uh, by just uh, 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 purchasing some of the items there, that would be great. I uh, in, invite you to do that. Praise God. Uh, but for the next little bit here, uh, we want to just allow the presence of the Lord to just saturate our hearts uh, Praise God. Uh, amen. Uh, we want the Holy Ghost uh, to just have its way. Amen. Uh, in Jesus' name. Praise God. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, it's so good to have you folks with us. I uh, want you to take your liberty. Uh, feel right at home. Praise God. Uh, let's welcome uh, the Chandlers. Uh, praise God. In Jesus' name. bound to live a life of scorn until the day when he made a way he made a way he made a way his life he gave rose from the grave my debt to pay when he 
for my sins on Calvary So that I could be set free That was the day when He made a way No other sacrifice to give No atonement for my sin I should have died the death I was deserving of in the middle of my town, he reached down and pulled me out. Oh, what a day when he made a way. He made a way. He made a way. His life he gave rose from the grave, my debt to pay. When he bore my sins on Calvary so that I be set free that was the day when he made a way when he bore my sins on calvary so that i could be set free that was the day when he made a way he made a way Be seated, whatever you want to do. How does he calm the waters that are stirring in my soul? How does he calm my troubled mind when I'm losing control? How does he tear down walls that have been standing for so long? How does he put the music right back in my song? I'd love to tell you how, but I don't know because I don't know how he does it, but he does, and he does. He answers every prayer that I pray And He does He does My God does He does I don't know how He does it, but He does Aren't you glad He does? Now I was down to my last time Didn't know what to do How could I pay my bills? How would He see me through? There was no need to worry No need to be distressed Cause He showed up on time tell you how, but I don't know because, I don't know how he does it, but he does, yeah, he does, he does, he does, he does, he, does. he answers every prayer that I pray, and he does, he does, my God does, he does, I don't know how he does it, but he does, now you say, he does, he does, he does, But he does I said I, I don't know how he does it But he does No, no, I, I don't, don't know how he does it But he does Aren't you glad God does every time? I don't know how he does it But he does Thank you, Jesus
for a people that have made themselves ready and who have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. I'm going to be ready. How about you? There is nothing more important in this world. There is nothing more important than in this world than making sure that my name is in the Lamb's book of life. And then I'm ready to go. Not that I was ready. Not that I got the Holy Ghost back however many years. But today, if the Lord would come today, I'm ready. And I live my life, try to. I'm not just saying me, but. We all make this as a, as, a, as a goal and as a practice to live our lives like they used to tell us years ago. We live our life like he's coming today. We work for him like he's not coming for another 20 years. Like we've still got some time. Not that that means you slack off, but we work hard because we know he's coming. We just don't know when. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord today. Thank you for coming. And uh, we live in very tumultuous times. And we need church more than ever. Whenever we can have it. Whenever it's possible. And I know you feel that way. But I thank you for being in the house of the Lord today. To worship the Lord together. And I promise you, God's already here. You know, we say, Lord, come into this place. Well, it's all right if you want to say that. He's already here. A lot of times it's up to us to recognize the fact that he is here. Because he's everywhere. Psalmist said, if I ascend into heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, even there you're going to find me. Even there you're going to be there. So he's already here. So I believe God is doesn't do anything doesn't uh, do anything for just no reason he always has a purpose he always has a goal he always has something he wants to do so today's going to be no different amen? amen praise god is there anybody here i know we've been here several times is there anybody here that's never heard us sing you're hearing us sing for the first time all right several hands we've not heard you sing either so we're even 
We'll change that here in a minute. So get your voices ready. But uh, all the way down to my right is my first wife. Her name is Lana. And uh, some of y'all get that next week. But um, she traveled with her family, the Jealous, and she's been on stages and platforms ever since she was three and a half years old. I was on her first recording at five, and that was just 25 years ago. So anyway, I'm glad she's here. Would you make her welcome back to Cookville, Tennessee? In the middle is Lindsay. Lindsay's 19 years young. Does a great job singing, helping me out with sound. She's a writer, uh, and a, a published writer, actually. Re wrote for several months for a Southern Gospel magazine, SGN Scoops. And uh, would you make Lindsay welcome back to Cookville? Tiffany's back with us. She's our firstborn daughter. She's 24 years young, singer, songwriter, musician. She wrote that last song that she sang to you. Who would you be? Would you make Tiffany welcome? And on my left is the, the head of the household. Or we like to make him think he is anyway. He lives in a girl's dorm. Uh, you are. You are, Father. He controls the mic, so. Um, no, but we're happy to have my dad here. He's the piano player, the preacher, songwriter. He does basically a little bit of everything. Would you make welcome Tim Chandler? Anybody ever heard of Rhoda in the Bible? Good, good. You're above average. <laughs> Most churches never heard of her. <laughs> we, were, we were singing in New Brunswick uh, last summer, and uh, I asked the crowd if anybody had ever heard of Rhoda. Well, back over here was a girl uh, sitting there, and her name was Rhoda. And I said, no, I'm not talking about you. <laughs> Rhoda was the little girl that when Peter, Herod put Peter in prison, and all the saints were praying that the Lord would release Peter from prison, and he goes back and knocks on the door, and Rhoda was the one that answered the door. I've always felt bad for Rhoda because she doesn't really get much credit. There's no songs written about her. You know, we preach sermons about the, 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 the situation, but not too many people ever focus on Rhoda. So I wanted to write a song about Rhoda. And uh, so we were working on our, our last CD. And I said, let's get that idea out and see if we can't do something with it. So uh, we, 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 we didn't. We didn't praise her too much, but maybe, maybe you'll think the song's all right. Sometimes you just got to oh, go and answer the door. Amen. There it was, the evil king with the wicked plan, torturing the saints of God all the cross the land. When he captured Peter, the church began to pray, asking for a pardon that the Lord would make a way. While they were praying, an angel God did send to visit that old jailhouse, and he walked right in. A light shone all around, Peter's chains fell to the floor. He walked right through the gate that opened up its own accord. Standing at the entrance of the house where saints did pray, believing for a miracle to happen in that day. Rhoda heard the knocking and ran out to the door. And when she finally opened it, she found what they prayed for. You've been praying, hoping, seeking and believing, waiting for your answer to arrive. On your knees, constantly, struggling with the doubt that's in your mind. Just overcome that fear, then listen to what you hear. This will be enough, you can't ignore. Go answer the door Cause it wasn't a vision It wasn't a dream It was exactly as it seemed 
So when you hear that knocking, but you don't know what it's for, don't stand there simply praying. Just go answer the door. Cause you've been praying, hoping, seeking, and believing, waiting for your answer to arrive. On your knees, constantly, struggling with the doubt that's in your mind. Just overcome that fear, then I listen to what you hear. This will be a knock you can't ignore. Just go answer, just go answer, just go answer the door. I know we've sung it once or twice or three times before. If you don't mind, we'll sing it one more time. Amen. The God that we serve knows how to do it again. Amen. He will come through. If he was there in the fire with those three Hebrew boys, if he was there at Jericho, in the midst of all that noise if he was there when the walls came tumbling down when paul and silas were no longer bound don't you know that he loves you and he understands he's gonna come through for you because he will come through how many believe it today that he will come through for you Cause he knows what you're facing But he'll give you grace in This valley that you're going through There's no river too wide Not a mountain too high That he can tunnel through Cause if he's done it before He can do it once more And he'll come through for you now when it looks like you're facing Some of us, we got mountains And they're just way too tall And right now it looks like That you've got no hope at all And in this old world They'll turn on you And you won't know What you're gonna do You just remember what he said Come on and lift up your head. He's going to come through for you. Yeah. Because he will come through. I'm telling you today that he will come through for you. Because he knows what you're facing. But he'll give you grace in this valley that you're going through. There's no river too wide. Not a mountain too high. Cause if he's done it before, let him do it once more. Cause he'll come through for you. You see, no river's too wide, and that mountain it's not too high. That if my God can tunnel through, cause if he's done it before, let him do it once more, and he'll come through for you. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I think I'm singing to a few people that know that's true because you've seen it happen in your own life. You can testify that the God that we serve sometimes might feel like he's a little bit off but he's never early he's never late he's always on time he's always come through and you just live your life like okay over in greenfield we live our life with the motto that if i don't have it i don't need it
<laughs> the apostle said, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So that means you're never going to go without anything that you need. If you don't have it yet, evidently, you don't need it yet. Because when you need it, you'll have it. Yes. Come on. Well, now I, I, I'll give you a little bit. We, ha we had to go through a few things before we tested that, that theory out, Brother Phillips. We had to go through a few things that told us that, hey, just, just hold on. God knows what he's doing. Everything's all right. God's not taken by surprise. He knows exactly what's happening. And everything's going to be okay. Is that all right? That's sermon number one. Anybody like old songs? All right, there's two or three hands out there. So the uh, rest of you can go get a drink or do something else and go to the restroom. Um, if you like old songs, and, and I'm sure more do than what raise their hands, you, you have to know the name Fanny Crosby. Because Fanny Crosby wrote over 8,000 songs. And uh, many of them we still sing in our services today because they've, they mean something to us. They, we can go back to situations and circumstances in our lives where they brought us through situations. Now, now the new songs are great, too. We just, we just don't have the experience with them yet. They're too new. We, we, we can't go back, in many cases, to situations where those songs brought us through. That'll happen over time. And, you know, songs just have a way of evolving and other songs take their place and all of that. But some of these songs, we, we, just, we just have too much history with them. And there's certain songs that you can sing that you can, you can go back to a certain spot on the altar yes. where God ministered to you or a certain place in time. Songs like, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. All right, here's your chance. Sing the chorus with us. This is my story. This is my song.
by Sing Savior 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 Hear my humble cry While all others thou art calling Do not pass me by One more I am thine, O oh Lord, I have heard thy voice as it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be close drawn to thee draw me nearer nearer blessed Lord to the cross where thou hast died draw me Nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding sign. Fanny Crosby was blind. She didn't have the ability to look at artist renderings of what Jesus might look like or what heaven might be like. But in a conversation one day with a writing cohort of hers, she said, I'll have no trouble identifying Jesus because he's going to be the one with the nail prints in his hands. Come on, folks. That's what identifies Christianity above any other beliefism in the world because everybody has their hero. Everybody has their religious leader that they look up to. But there's only one place in the world where you can go to a hillside outside Jerusalem. And you can walk up to a grave that used to house the body of Jesus Christ, but it's empty. He's no longer there. He is risen. And one day we're going to see him just as he is. cohort looked back at her and said you better go write that song so she came back the next day with the words to this song and I trust it'll be a blessing when my life work is ended and I cross the swelling tide when the bright and glorious morning shall see I shall know my Redeemer when I reach the other side and his smile will be the first to shall know him I shall know him and redeemed by his side I shall stand I shall
spotless white. He will lead me where no tears will ever fall. In that glad song of ages, I shall mingle with delight. But I long to Savior first of all, I shall know Him, I shall know Him, and redeem by His side, I shall stay. because we've known him down here. And what a day that will be when we get to see the one who died for us, to see the one who carried us through so many struggles and trials and to say thank you for what you did face to face. That will be a glorious day. And as we've mentioned, that day is coming quicker and quicker. And this world just keeps getting crazier and crazier. He just keeps getting better and better. Aren't you thankful for that today? In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Uh, it's such an honor to be here in the presence of God with more of God's people. And I'm sure you feel the same way. But after this year, I don't take one moment in his presence for granted anymore because it is so good to feel his presence today. And uh, I don't want to take too much time because it's already been mentioned by Pastor, but we do have a display table set up in the vestibule. And like always, we'd like every one of you to stop by and take something home with you after you pay for it. That still helps. And uh, anything you purchase back there goes towards our ministry, helps us stay on the road. And uh, even when COVID's doing its thing, God's helping us. And uh, we're getting to minister, but that supports our ministry and we hope it blesses you in return. We do have our singing CDs out there. Um, we have my dad's piano instrumental CDs, perfect for prayer time or reading your Bible. My grandfather, Pastor Wendell Jellison, um, has a solo project out there. Uh, filled with a, a bunch of great songs. My mom's family, a singing group, The Jellisons. We have their last three projects as well. Uh, we have my grandfather's book, Spiritual Warfare in the Kingdom of Skalbonia. And uh, I believe we had it the last time we were here, but things have gotten even better. And uh, you may be wondering, what is Skalbonia? What, is that, what does that even mean? Uh, well, real quick, give you a little bit of history about the book. 15 miles from where my grandfather pastors a church is a town called Skullbone, Tennessee. And they said the Wild West was tame compared to some of the evilness and wickedness that used to go on there. Every sin in the book you can imagine has happened there. And uh, when my grandfather went to pastor his church uh, many years ago, he realized that there were some spiritual brick walls that the church just couldn't break through. And it wasn't until someone came to church that one night and told him that you're fighting the prince of the kingdom of Skalbonia that he went and looked it up on Google, everything you, you can find out about it. The governor even declared in 1952 that section of land, the kingdom of Skalbonia. It's, it's legal and everything. You can look it up. And so when my grandfather realized what they were up against, he knew what he had to do. And he started a prayer walk going through our town where for over 803 weeks, 
Someone from our church every day has either walked through or driven through our town praying and pleading the blood of Jesus over our city, over our county. We've been repenting for the sins of the land. And God is hearing from heaven. And he is opening up the windows of heaven and pouring out blessings. And he is healing our land. And we are seeing the results from that. People are coming in and getting their lives turned around. People are asking forgiveness from other families for things they didn't even do, just the sins of the fathers thing that's happening. And God is just doing some amazing things because his people are crying out to him. And he said, if, if we would do that, he would hear from heaven and forgive our sin and heal our land. And how many would agree that's what needs to happen in this day and age? And he is waiting. It's if we will humble ourselves and pray and seek his face. We have to seek his face. And that is what is happening, and it's only by the grace of God, and we are so thankful. We've also started a prayer tent in front of our church. Our church is right in the middle of town. You can't go through town without seeing our church. Thank you, God. And um, we have a prayer tent where Tuesdays and Thursdays, people can come by and get free prayer. Free prayer. We thought that would be a good good selling point. Um, no, but people are coming by and we're praying with people and letting people know that we're here. God is here for them. And uh, God is just doing some amazing things. Revival is happening. And that book is just a testimony just to some of the, some, some of the things that have been going on since my grandfather has pastored there. So if you or someone you know is going through spiritual warfare, check that book out. I know you will be greatly, greatly blessed by it. As already mentioned, yes, my mom has an online clothing business called Lena Sweet By and By, and uh, we bring it for the ladies, but the men can buy them too, for the ladies. All the women say amen. Amen. But that's not why we're here today. We want you to come by and say hello and, and, and praise the Lord with you. But we're here today because we want to... to allow God to minister to your need and, and maybe that something that we have gone through can help what you go through. Never despise what you go through because you don't know who it's to help. And it is my belief that everything has a purpose. Pain has a purpose. Uh, just everything does. So don't, don't despise it. Like I, I, I've been saying here recently, let the storm praise because you don't know why you're going through what you're going through. But God does. And when they were in that boat that night on the water, they were wondering, what in the world is going on? And the whole time they had Jesus with them. And they had seen his miracles. They knew what he was capable of. Why were they afraid? Because they're human. I'm human. But don't, don't despise the storm you're in because God wants to use that to make, to make your situation better. And sometimes when we ask him to make our situations better, he doesn't because we still got some lessons to learn or, or, or we need to, to be in a place where we can minister to somebody. But until that happens, he wants to make somebody in this place feel better. And sometimes that can make the whole difference in the world because we need to know that God is caring for us and he is, and don't ever forget that. A few years ago, I was at an Ohio camp meeting and it was just a service where I came in and, and I needed that touch from God. I was down and, and I wanted to be refreshed. And I came down to the altar and I began to pray. And God began to renew me and, and restore me. And when I walked away, I thought, man, I feel better than before I came in here. In fact, I think I feel better than I ever have before. And for someone today, this song is going to be your testimony. Because no matter what you go through, Jesus will always be there for you. And he will make you better than you ever have before. Aren't you thankful for that? Let's praise him today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Well, I've been searching for something for a mighty, mighty long time. Only knew what I needed was a peace that I could not find. My situation had me discouraged. I didn't want to feel this way until I met the one with the power to turn my night to day. And I feel better, better than I had before. I feel I can find. Feel like it's Something changed down in my heart, just like an open door. Cause I feel better, better, better than I had before. Aren't you thankful for that today? Amen. 
The shackles I used to control me Can't hold me anymore The weight of my past has been lifted What was taken has been restored When I have let down all my defenses And let His grace come in He heard my cry of surrender And let me start over again I feel better, better than I had before. I feel I can fly high. I feel I can soar. Something changed down in my heart, just like an open door. Cause I feel better, better, better than I had before. I feel better, I feel better, so much better, so much better. Do you feel better since you I met Jesus? Better. He changed you so much better, so much better. Well, I feel better, I feel better, so much better, so much better. I feel better, better than I had before. I feel like I can fly. Feel like it's all Something changed down in my heart Just like an open door Cause I feel better, better, better than I had before morning than when you walked in. I feel better and I wasn't feeling bad to start with. But that's what the presence of God will do for you. It is so good to be back here in Cookville. And I really have no idea where I'm at. I need to look on the map. I have no clue where I'm at in the state. Are we in the middle somewhere? In Tennessee. Well, I know I'm in Tennessee, but I don't know where I'm at. And you know what the cool thing about that is? I don't care. It doesn't matter. We're here. And to be anywhere is a good thing. And uh, that's why they don't put me behind the wheel too often. Because I don't know where I'm at. When he opens the doors, I get out and sing or shop, one or the other. And uh, sometimes I've done it at the same time. But anyway, um, I, that's, that's the cool thing. You know, the older you get, I don't know about you all, if you get over the 50 mark, it's kind of like, I feel like I'm the mom. I've earned this spot. The girls are 19 and 24. They, Tiffany's been driving for 100 years, and Lindsay's been driving for a lot of years. And I'm like, they're all like, okay, who wants to drive now? And I just sit there. I don't raise my hand. And they're all like, okay, we know mom doesn't want to drive. And but, we don't want her to drive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it works out really well. They prefer that I just sit there and relax. And I, and I, I think, you know, I've earned it. I've earned this spot. I have traveled and evangelized for over 40-some years, maybe. I started out when I was six years old on the road, and I'm 53 now, so whatever that equals. So I feel like I've earned my spot in that front seat, take my shoes off, put my little neck rest on, and just enjoy until I see a big sign that, you know, it's a place I want to stop. And that's, uh, we need to exit now. But you know what? The road of life can get a little rough sometimes. We've had our fun times. We, we were talking to brother and sister uh, Phillips the other night about, you know, there's times we, you, you break down. You have issues with the van. We have a, a bus that's in repair right now in Florida. And, uh, you know, we, you have issues like that. And, and I've taught my girls, you know, when we break down along the highway and it, thank God it's not been for a while. Thank you, Jesus. And, uh, but when we have, I, I always try to find the good in it. And I, I, I never forget one time we broke down, and, and this is several years ago, and, and I looked out the window to see what we, what might be there. But God seldom breaks us down at a good store or parking lot. Like, God, if you're going to make it fall apart, do it at a Goodwill or, you know. A, Gabe's. Gabe, Gabe's, yes. I would break down in a lot at Gabe's any day. But he usually doesn't work that way. And, and we're, we're looking, I look out the window, and it is one of the ugliest fields you've ever seen. 
there were no flowers. There was no greenery. It was just an ugly field. And, and I told the girls, I said, enjoy the creation. I mean, we're going to be here a while. You might as well. Get out the skip bow game and, and just play a game for a while. Make the best of your situation. And some of you in here, I've already talked with some this morning. You're going through it or you've been through it. You're right in the middle of it. Or I know you say, well, I can't enjoy that. I understand the word enjoy as the way we, we think about it. But as Tiffany's already said, find that place in your trial, in your trauma, where you say, God, I surrender it all to you. You've not left me. And I'm not leaving, so that's okay. Everything's, everything's cool. You've got to make a determination. And look for the good in the bad. Look for someone to witness to. Look for somebody that's in need. There's always somebody worse off than you. And I know it doesn't seem that way sometimes. We've had our days in the hospital. We've had our times when we've had issues that I think, Dear God, what in the world? And then he sends along somebody that needs to know what I've been through. And they need to know who I serve. We're going to do a song that's a, it's about 31 years old now. My mother wrote this song 31 years ago. But I, it's, it's a strong song for right now. Because you've got to be sure that you know what you believe. In these last days, you better not be wishy-washy because you'll just get washed on down the stream. You're going to have to realize what you believe in God and what you stand for. And it doesn't matter what takes place in this world. God forbid that they shut our doors permanently. But if that would happen, are you going to be strong enough to say, God, I'm still going to serve you? Come on. If I have to sneak and do it. If I have to do it underground, I'm going to serve you. Folks, eternity is a long time to be wrong. I said, it's a long time to be wrong. You need to make a determination in your heart today to say, God, whatever it takes, I am going to see you someday. It takes more than shaking a preacher's hand. It's more than saying, I believe. It's saying, God, I commit to you and I receive your spirit into my life daily. Not just once in a while, but daily, God, I live for you. And I'm so glad to know that no matter what takes place, I'm anchored in Jesus. Would you lift your hands to him and thank him right now? I love you, Jesus. He'll keep me when storms are raging. They try to cover me And the wind, it blows And it feels so cold But Jesus says I'm still the anchor of your soul
Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that anchor, God. Praise God. I just want to take a few moments. I know that time is wasting, and, and I'm the only thing standing between you and lunch, and we're all hungry. So I will not keep you very, very long at all. I do want to deliver to you what I feel the Lord has laid on my heart for the closing moments of this service. Genesis chapter 1, just three verses. While you're turning there, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, we'll start at the beginning. Thank you so much for the opportunity, Pastor and Sister Phillips, to be here. Thank you for your great hospitality, the room and the basket, and whoever was responsible for that last night. That uh, is always a good thing at the, end of a, at the end of a day to go and get some chocolate on World Diabetes Day. That was for them. They had nuts and stuff in there for me, so that was great. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you because the entrance of thy words giveth light, giveth understanding unto the simple. Help us, Lord Jesus, to be able to receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save our souls. And we'll give you the praise and the glory and the honor that belongs to you in the name of Jesus Christ. And somebody said, in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. God bless you. You may be seated. A contractor can look at an empty field and visualize... A huge skyscraper. An artist can take an empty piece of paper and draw a masterpiece that leaves the rest of us in awe. They see things that if you're not an artist, you don't see. Yet it is hard for the human mind to begin to comprehend what took place at the beginning, before Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning. Well, what was before the beginning? Well, the writer of the book of Psalms has a little bit of an insight for us. In the 90th Psalm, in the second verse, before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, and from everlasting to everlasting, he said, thou art God. God's always been. He is from everlasting to everlasting. When God created the heavens and the earth, it was a land of nothingness, an entity of darkness, of uncertain boundaries. It was literally nothing. Had you been able to witness that scene, you would have experienced hopelessness in its purest form. You would have experienced what it, like, what it was like to feel 
darkness. And yet in a natural sense, you have experienced that in your own life. Your own darkness. Your own void. Your own chaos. Your own disorganization. Will things ever get better? Will things ever change? Will life ever be anything other than what it is right now? Will I be able to see the light at the end of this tunnel? Will I ever get my healing? Will my child ever come back to God? Will things ever get better? But the Bible tells us in that land of nothingness, in that time where there was absolutely nothing, the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep, the Bible said that the Spirit of God moved. Literally continued, Jameson Fawcett Brown says, literally continued brooding over as a fowl does when hatching eggs. Although the Spirit of God was brooding over basically nothing. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Can I tell somebody in this room this morning that God is brooding over your nothingness? God is brooding over what you feel like will never happen. God's saying, just hold on a little bit longer. God doesn't need our abilities. He just needs us to be able to trust in him. You know what? I don't always have much to offer God. But God is good at taking nothing and making something from it. That's why he wants you. We feel like, well, I don't really have much to offer this world or I don't have much to offer God. You're just exactly what God is looking for. My situation might seem hopeless, and I, I got to be honest with you, Pastor. You've, you've experienced this before. I got to be honest with you. I know what I felt when I came into service, and sometimes you kind of look at the crowd and you size up the crowd and you try to feel like whether, well, if, if, if what, does what I have to say really uh, affect anybody in this room? And I got to be honest with you. When I sized up the crowd today, I got to thinking, God, is this what you want me to say? But evidently it is because I know what I feel. But I've come to tell somebody in this room that feels like that things are never going to get better, that things are never going to change, that you don't really have much to offer God, that God really doesn't have anything to do with you because maybe, you know, you just don't see what God could, could benefit by in accepting you. And you got to realize that when we feel like we have nothing, that's exactly what God is used to taking and making something from it. Amen. Miracles start with nothing. The miracle of the widow's oil started with empty pots. The first miracle that Jesus ever did, performing the wedding at the marriage of Cana at Galilee, he turned water into wine, it started with empty pots. Come on, the, the, bear, the, the, the ruler of the feast said, you go take those empty pots and you go fill them with water and, 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 and take them to Jesus and see what happens. The miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 started with empty stomachs. Come on, somebody. It started with empty stomachs and no lunch. We don't have anything. We don't have any. We, we got nothing. But there is a little lad, and he's got five loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many? Because nothing is the raw material for everything. The woman at the well said, when Jesus offered her a drink, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. How are you going to give me a drink of water? He said, the water that I give you 
Come on, is a, is a water of living water. He that drinketh of this water is never going to thirst again. Come on, you might be down to nothing, but I got something to give you that's going to sustain you for the rest of your life. Come on, somebody. The Spirit of God has shown up on a Sunday morning in Cookville, Tennessee to tell somebody, I don't care how down you feel. I don't care how much down to nothing you might feel like your life has come. The God that we serve is great at taking nothing and making something out of it. He's great at taking nothing and making something of it. Many years ago, I was a part-timer, they call them, at a funeral home. And I was, I was uh, taking care of a visitation and I was there, I don't know if there's any other staff there or not, I can't quite remember, but I remember being in the office and everybody was taking care of the visitation out, outside, the family was doing their thing and mourning the loss of a loved one. And I was hungry. I know that may sound a little bit uncaring about what was happening in the other room but you know they, they were taken care of and I, I, I was doing what I needed to do and I was in the office and I was hungry I hadn't brought anything to eat for my, for my lunch so I started looking I started looking through drawers of the desk and I started looking for some change because I thought if I could just get some change there's some vending machines down the hall, and I can go get me a drink and a bag of chips or something to give me something to eat. There wasn't a penny in those desk drawers. I thought they certainly wouldn't mind if I just kind of borrowed, you know, 50 cents or a dollar or something. I'd bring it back the next day. There was nothing. But I brought a briefcase with me to do some work while I was there, and I started going through my briefcase. I knew there wasn't anything in there. But I thought I'd go through it anyway. And I walked and did look through the briefcase. There wasn't nothing there. But miracles start with nothing. So I opened up a little compartment that I hadn't opened up in a long time. I knew there was nothing there. And I reached in it and I pulled out a wad of $20 bills. Where did that come from? But they were still $20 bills. They don't go in a vending machine. <laughs> they don't make change for a $20 bill in a vending machine. So I still have nothing. Sometimes not enough is just as bad as not anything at all. Or not the right thing is just as bad as not anything at all. I couldn't wait for that shift to be over. <laughs> so I could go to the, the drive-thru and get something to eat. Because now I had something. You may feel like you're down to nothing. But when we're down to nothing, you know the, you know the phrase. When we feel like we're down to nothing, God is up to something. Anybody remember when you had nothing? Ye who were in time past were not a people, but now you're the people of God. You didn't have any mercy back then, but now you've obtained mercy. You're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Could somebody start celebrating what God has done for you and understand that if he did it before, he knows how to do it again? Come on, Ephesians tells it like this. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles according to the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Is anybody thankful for what God has done in your life? taking nothing and making something out of it. Matter of
of fact, God really requires us to come to him with nothing. Songwriter said it like this. Augustus Top Lady in 1776 wrote the words to the old hymn. Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. Naked come to thee for dress, helpless look to thee for grace. Foul I, found, I to thy fountain fly, wash me, Savior, or I die. Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Job had a pretty bad day one day. Job starts hearing the reports of messengers are coming to give him a message. And the first one comes and he says, Oh, Job, your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking in their eldest brother's house. And all of a sudden, as the oxen were plowing and the asses were feeding beside them, the Sabians fell on them, took them away. And yea, they slew all the servants with the edge of the sword, and I'm the only one left to come and tell you about it. Second messenger comes, a fire of God has fallen, burned up all the sheep and the servants and consumed them. Now understand this, folks. Let, 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 let's get the text, what, what's happening in the text here. The fire of God has fallen. And it burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And, I, and only I, I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Third messenger. Chaldeans made three bands, fell upon the camels, carried them away, slayed the servants with the edge of the sword. I'm the only one left to tell you about it. Fourth messenger comes. Sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, it came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the men and they are all dead. I'm the only one left to tell you about it. Now, what's your response when you realize that everything you have is gone? And all of a sudden, Job is down to nothing. Here's what he said. Naked came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord, because nothing is the raw material for everything. I didn't have nothing when I started with all of this stuff and God's the one that's given it to me the first time. So if I'm down to nothing again, God's the one that can bring it back to me again because blessed be the name of the Lord because I understand that it's come from him. I don't know who you might be in this room today. It feels like you're down to nothing. Whether it's down to nothing health-wise down to nothing finance-wise, down to nothing spiritually. I don't know what condition you might find yourself in. Maybe you're not. Maybe this message isn't, isn't really for you today, but it might be someday. And you'll remember a preacher coming by to tell you that nothing, when you get down to nothing, nothing is the raw material for everything. So all you got to do is just start searching, seeking the Lord again and saying, hey, I'm down to nothing, God. What are you going to do this time? How are you going to bring me out this time? What are you going to do this time? If I don't have it, evidently I don't need it yet. The God that I serve is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I ask or think according to the power that's working in me. Do I have anybody in Cookville, Tennessee that still believes that the God that we serve is able to do everything he's ever been able to do? Anything he's ever been able to do, he's still able to do it because we probably sung the song here once or twice. He's not the great I was. He's still the great I am. Thank you, buddy God. You say, oh, preacher, it's easy to preach about it behind the sacred desk and try to encourage everybody else about it. Yeah, I know. I understand. I get it. 
It's because I preached it to myself. When I felt like I was down to nothing. When I felt like, and some of you know our story. The girls, several years ago, went to the mama. We're going to be able to sing again. Because I had all kinds of health situations. My wife had to drive. All the way to Florida and back. Lindsay wasn't old enough. Tiffany was in Bible college. And I couldn't see. We were down to nothing. I'm sorry. We, 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 we all love each other. We all know what we can say and what we can't. But I went to the doctor. And the doctor said, Do you know you've got cataracts? I'm probably the only person in that doctor's chair that he ever had. That when they said, you got cataracts, they said, thank you, Jesus. Because there's a surgery for that. They were telling me there's nothing they could do. I don't know whether God gave me cataracts or whether the other guys just didn't know what they were talking about. I said, thank you, Jesus. I went and got the cataracts off. And now she don't have to drive. But it's in those dark days that you learn how to preach to yourself. It's in those dark days that you learn how to say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord doesn't mean a whole lot. When everything's going right. Blessed be the name of the Lord is great to do. And we all rejoice and we have a great time and run around the church and have, have great excitement. It's, it's a wonderful thing. But it doesn't mean quite the same thing to say blessed be the name of the Lord in those times as it does when you're down to nothing. And you realize that if you got nothing, you got no hope only hope that you have is in Jesus Christ what better hope could there be what better place could you be to be down to nothing in the presence of an almighty God would you stand with me all over the house in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I thank you Lord God because you gave us your word that said you would never leave us nor forsake us. God, you said that you would never, ever forsake us. God, but you would be with us always, even unto the end of the age. Forgive us, God. Forgive us, God. I, I feel like we need to say, God, and it may not be, it may not be applicable to everybody. That's fine. But to, to you who feel like it's applicable to you, just right where you're at for the moment, just begin to ask God to forgive you for every single time you got down to the place that you're at and you wondered, God, what in the world are you doing? Are you, uh, am, am I ever going to be able to come back from this? Am I ever going to be able to recover from this? Come on, somebody. It, we're all human. If I were to take a poll, we'd all have to say, yes, I'm human. We've all been to that place where we've wondered, God, what in the world's going on? And we've all had to repent. And we've all had to say, God, forgive me, Lord Jesus, for not trusting in you like I needed to trust in you. But you know what? That's a good thing because the God that we serve is able and just to forgive us from all of our trespasses. All we got to do is just surrender them to him. All we got to do is confess them to him. And he is able and just to forgive us of all of our sins in the name of 
Jesus, it's all right to go out and cry out to the Lord and say, God, forgive me, Lord, for every time, God, that I've ever doubted your word. Forgive me, God, for every time that I've ever questioned what was going on, God, in the name of Jesus. God, forgive me, Lord, for not understanding that your will and your plan is better for me than mine is for myself. God, I trust you, Lord Jesus. I'm thankful for your word, and God, I'm thankful for you confirming your word with signs following. In the name of Jesus, take a moment right now and talk to the Lord. Would you do it? In the name of Jesus, God, I love you, Lord. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for your spirit, God, that we feel in this house. I thank you, Lord Jesus, God, for your, 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 your promises, Lord Jesus, that are yea and amen to everyone that will believe, God. In the name of Jesus. 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 As we close this service, I'm going to open up this altar. For those of you that want to come, it's, anybody can come, but especially if you feel like that you relate to the sermon that was brought to you, the word that was brought to you today. And you just need a little bit more strength and maybe God wants to God wants to bring this word into fruition into your life this very day and confirm his word to you this very day in the name of Jesus. I will serve thee because I love thee. You have given life to I was nothing before you found me. You have given life to me.
right now. You got pain in your body right now. Lift up your hand. Got pain in your body right now. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right. It's okay to admit it. That's all right. Thank you. I want you to lift up the other hand now if you can. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, God. You were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you, and with your stripes we are healed. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I speak healing in the name of Jesus. I speak healing just like you told us to do, Lord Jesus. I speak healing into this room. And I command pain to go through the power of the name of Jesus. God, we receive your touch in this room right now. Come on, expect to receive it right now. Come on, expect to be healed right now in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for your touch, Lord. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for healing in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and put your hand on that part of your body right now if you can. In the name of Jesus, receive healing in Jesus' name right now. Thank you, Lord God, for your touch. Thank you, God, for your touch. God, you're great at taking nothing and making something out of it, God. So we receive your touch in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, we receive your touch in Jesus' name. Heart is broken pieces. Ruined lives are why you died on Calvary. Your touch was all I long for. You have given life. I don't want to embarrass anybody right now, but I feel led to pray for one other, one other condition, one other situation in this room right now. It's all right to admit that we have difficulty in our thought patterns. It's all right to admit that we have difficulty believing what we know instead of what we see. That's okay. We're all human and we all have to struggle with that from time to time. Some people struggle with it more than others. Some people are able to dispel it easier than others. But you're not weird because you have those frustrations and struggles. So if that's you, I want you to put your hands on your head right here. Put your hands on your head right there. If you want just everybody close your eyes right now. Some people may not be some people may not be comfortable revealing that information that's okay God is going to do a work in your thought processes right now the Holy Ghost that you received is going to begin to work in your mind right now the Holy Ghost is going to begin to work in your mind and God's going to depend on you to continue to believe and trust in him to continue to not look at what you see but look at what you know in the name of Jesus Christ God I thank you Lord God that you not only took stripes on your back for the healing of our bodies God but a crown of thorns was placed on your head God to cover every issue that we would ever have in our minds every thought process Lord Jesus it is not like you God in the name of Jesus God we we repent God before you one more time God believing Lord Jesus that you are our ultimate hope you are our ultimate faith God that we can put in you Lord Jesus God you're our only hope Lord Jesus God if you don't do it Lord it's not going to get done we rely totally and completely on you Lord we rely totally and completely on you so Lord in the name of Jesus God, we believe you, Lord God. 
to do a work in our minds, Lord Jesus, to help us to understand that you're with us, Lord. You're not against us. You hadn't left us, God. In the name of Jesus. God, in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance happening in this room right now. I feel deliverance happening in this room for somebody's mind. In the name of Jesus. God, we believe you, Lord. We have confidence and trust in you, Lord Jesus. God, you're going to help us, Lord. You're going to do what cannot be done in the arms of the flesh. Lord, we don't lean under the arms of the flesh, but we lean upon you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Would you give God a praise right now? Would you give God a praise right now? Hallelujah. Before I turn it back to pastor, I just want to sing this one more song. our hands to the Lord right now and give him thanks for that deep settled peace that he has brought into this room today into our minds into our hearts let's praise him and thank him right now in Jesus name thank you Lord oh thank you Jesus yes thank you Lord thank you Lord Rejoice in your peace, oh God. Thank you, O oh Lord, for that peace that you give, not as the world gives. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Are you thankful for the presence of the Lord that fills this place right now? Praise God. Amen. Would you just put your hands together? Give praise unto the Lord right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. What an awesome morning. Praise God. Amen. How refreshing. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank the Lord for the refreshing of His Spirit today. Praise God. And thank you to the Chandlers for being such a blessing to us today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Thank the Lord. Praise God. Amen. As always, they have been such a joy, such a blessing. We appreciate that so very much. 
Praise God to all of you. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord. Uh, we look forward to tonight. Uh, amen. Uh, Brother Jason Collet will be preaching for us tonight. Excited, looking forward to the word of the Lord. Uh, praise God uh, and the move of the Lord in the service. Uh, amen. Uh, so, uh, fellowship, greet the Chandlers. Let them know how much you appreciate their ministry today. Greet one another. Uh, amen. Uh, God bless you. We'll see you tonight at 6, uh, 5.30 for prayer. In Jesus' name.